Hello guys, good to see you again. Um, actually I can't see you, so scratch that, sorry. It's just something we say in the South, right? Be cordial. Okay, Joey Johnson, I am here, um, and I'm glad that you've decided to join us. How about that? Or to join me. It's another thing we say in the South, right? We always put us in it, you know. Well, I reckon we're going to go do something. It'll be just me. Anyhow, let's get off that tangent. Three dollars, okay? If these videos are helpful to you, if you like them, please, by all means, go to my website, joeyjohnsondo.com, and donate your three dollars. I would greatly appreciate it, okay? As I said, to go to help hungry college kids, my wife and myself. Okay, there's my website, excuse me, not website, but email address. Now, let's get started. Gram-positive cocci. How are we going to differentiate between staph and strep, which are your two gram-positive cocci? You give it the catalase test, okay? If it has cats in it, then, uh, yeah, you're going to have a staff of cats, okay? See them over here with the nice little bow ties on and then the little waiter suits or something? It's a staff of cats, okay? So when you get over here to the staff of cats, the rock star of the bunch is going to be staph aureus, okay? Now, if you think rock star, I kind of think beta hemolysis, okay? It's not partial hemolysis. The things are very destructive, like rock stars tearing up guitars and stuff, right? Beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis. You have a clear zone on the blood auger, okay? Not partially gone, but a clear zone, okay? So, staph aureus is the rock star over here. It coagulates positive as well, which means it can coagulate your blood, clump it together. Obviously, that would cause some big problems in our vessels, okay? So, staph of cats, coagulase positive means it's a rock star, it's got beta hemolysis, it's a rock star. Now, for the others, the leftovers, okay, that are coagulase negative, you're going to give it the bison test. Let the bison come out and decide. The bison likes to lick your skin, okay? The bison is no, it is skin sensitive. It doesn't like to lick sap. Do you like to lick sap? I know I don't, okay? Yeah, that stuff's nasty, right? Okay? So, the bison likes to lick your skin, so staph epidermis the bison is going to lick. It's sensitive to it. See the bison? See its little tongue licking it? Okay. So the bison likes to lick your skin. Cha-ching. He is sensitive to staph epi. He hates sap. He does not like the taste of sap. Okay. So the bison is sensitive. Nova bison to staph epi. It hates and resists sap. Let's go over here to the strep world. Okay. You don't have a staff of cats, obviously. You're in the strep world. Okay. You're strep down on help. You don't have much help on your staff at all. You've got alpha partial hemolysis, beta complete hemolysis, and gamma, which is kind of a mixed hemolysis, okay? Let's go to the low yield stuff first. Gamma hemolysis, if it grows on the salt, it's enterococcus fecalis. It used to be group D strep. They've reorganized it now, whatever. Uh, strep bovine, the bovis, okay? It doesn't like salt, okay? The cows don't like the salt. The bison's the one that likes the salt. It likes your salty skin. That's why it's sensitive to it. Cows hate it. They resist salt, okay? All right. So now, uh, and bovis for bovine, okay, that's why I said cows, but anyhow. So, let's go to alpha hemolysis, okay? Optogen, y'all remember Optimus Prime, right? Transformers, okay, everybody is scared of him, even the wind. The wind runs away, he's sensitive. He's like, oh, you've hurt my feelings, Optimus Prime, I'm running away, I'm scared, I'm wimpy, okay? Strep pneumo, so Optimus Prime, strep pneumo is sensitive to it, but the virulent mutant says, I don't care who you are, I will fight you. Okay, so that is the grouping of streps, like the mutans, the sanguis, they're kind of in your mouth, you have a dental procedure, they get dislodged, okay, cause heart problems. All right, so that's viridans, okay, the virulent mutant will resist Optimus Prime. Everyone is scared of Optimus Prime, typically, though, including the wind, okay, and I'll go ahead and give you a little mnemonic here, mops, all right, so if you remember, we said sinusitis, otitis, media, and meningitis those are uh this one's going to be the most common cause of those also of pneumonia all right and you remember the o is also for optogen okay do a hebrew style right here write it backwards okay so mops is a little mnemonic to help you remember strep pneumo okay so now let's go over here to the b world all right bacitracin remember what i said if it's beta hemolytic they're a rock star right these are rock stars of the b world b because it's baby rock star b is for baby duh okay this is what their mothers have to get a shot for 34 to 36 weeks for group B strep. And also, you're going to have group A strep. This is the alpha rock star, the main one, okay? This one is, um, this is the B world. Beta hemolysis, group B strep, bacitracin is going to differentiate between them. you got uh, group A strep. So now check this out.
Imagine a big red pussy M on your back. It is oozing pus. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's so gross. Why? Because group A strep has pus for pio, okay, like strep throat, and also it has the M protein, okay, and that'll help you remember that it is bacitracin sensitive, okay, what resists bacitracin is going to be the baby, okay, so you got group B strep is bacitracin negative, group A strep is bacitracin sensitive, okay, let's talk about some virulence factors now, okay, let's start over here with the main rock star, staph aureus, okay, now when the A is for, the A and aureus, okay, is going to be for the group A, I meant for the protein A, okay? It has group, I mean, excuse me, I keep wanting to say group A, I'm so sorry, but it has protein A. That's going to bind to the FC region of IgG. If y'all remember, you have the heavy chains and the light chains, right? You got the FC region down here, so group A, just think about, excuse me, protein A. I'm so sorry. Think about protein A coming here and rendering it okay incapable of doing its job so now it can proliferate without having to worry about that coming and affecting it all right so staph aureus is going to have protein a binds to the fc region of igg has adherence to mucosal cells via tachoic acid all right and it's also going to have the toxin tsst1 all right tsst1 that is toxic shock syndrome okay it's the main one that's going to cause toxic shock syndrome. Strep pio will have a toxic shock-like syndrome that it will cause. Also, staph aureus is going to have a preformed toxin in food, so if you get sick in less than six hours of eating, then it's probably staph aureus or it's going to be bacillus cereus. Those are the two, okay? So less than six hours sickness, TSST1, um, protein A. Remember, it has beta hemolysis as well. It's also going to have uh, necrotizing fasciitis, this or strep pio both of them could have that this one could cause osteomyelitis um, if it goes septic it can cause arthritis it has an exfoliative toxin so you want to think about that for scalded skin syndrome okay um, postpartum uh, mastitis and also it can cause mitral valve endocarditis all right the thing is it can cause mitral valve endocarditis but if they are IV, IV users it's then going to cause tricuspid valve endocarditis because you got to figure it people that use IVs is going I meant yeah IV drug abusers is going in their veins so it's going to come through the right side and cause tricuspid valve trouble okay um, this one is going to be associated with salmon colored sputum on pneumonia if you have pneumonia and someone comes in with a salmon colored sputum then you're going to be thinking staph aureus the SA like salmon okay Toxic shock syndrome, just to go back over that, remember it's going to have like a high fever, rash, hypotension. Um, let's see, anything else? If you put it on a mannitol auger, then it will ferment a yellow color. RS means gold, okay? Think of AU as the, the abbreviation for gold in chemistry, right? And the if you remember the drug of choice for those is going to be your penicillinases, your ox diclox, methnaf, those are your anti staphs, okay? Excellent. Now let's go on to staph epi. If you see staph epi on a question, it's probably going to be having to do something with um, having heart valve implants. Okay, they'll probably have no biasin in there, and it should grow pink on mannitol auger. Staph aureus will grow gold, meaning it ferments mannitol. This will grow pink, meaning it does not ferment mannitol. Staph sepro will pop up sometimes. If it pops up. Now, oh, and by the way, staph epi, you don't take any chances of that. That's supposed to be normal flora on your skin. If it gets inside you, go ahead and give them vanco. That's the drug of choice. So staph sapro, you're thinking young, female, um, newly having sex, UTIs, okay? So you're going to take care of that with a fluoroquinolone, mainly cipro. All right, so let's go over here to staph, uh, strep pneumo, excuse me. Now, the thing that I will say about strep pneumo as I'm going through it, um, I think we've kind of covered it with the mops, so let's continue on. Let's go to strep pio. All right, when we get to strep pyogenes, as I said, that's the rock star over there, okay? Think of a very pussy M, because it has M protein mimicry. So your body says, oh, you know, it's just like the rest of them. There's nothing wrong here. It goes on about it, and it's just fooled your body, so now it can proliferate, okay? That's what M protein does. Of course, you're going to have pharyngitis because it is strep throat, okay? It's what it does, what it's known for. Um, necrotizing fasciitis. Um, 
Let's see. You're going to have post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, which is going to be a nephritic syndrome. So therefore, nephritic, remember, is going to have less than 3.5 grams of protein produced per day in your urine. And it's going to have blood in your urine. Okay, this is going to be a hypersensitivity reaction. It goes down there and causes the uh, humps down there in epithelia. Okay, so it's also going to cause scarlet fever. So think of this big red scarlet M, okay? Scarlet fever. You can also remember since it's group A strep, the A is for scarlet letter, scarlet fever. It's going to cause rheumatic fever. Now, an important thing to remember about this is if you get rheumatic fever, rheumatic fever can only occur after the strep that causes strep throat, okay? So strep pio, if it's not causing strep throat, you probably won't progress to rheumatic fever. If you get rheumatic fever, you're going to go to check out the Jones criteria. All right, Sendenham's chorea, which is going to be the wild gesticulations. All right, erythema, okay, and then you're out the nodosa. So you get nodules, erythemous nodules. Um, let's see, uh, the O, the O kind of looks like a heart, so you remember about endocarditis, and then J is for joints. All right, and so that's going to be kind of your Jones criteria. I left the N off because I know different people would do the E and the N different ways. Look it up, see which way works best for you. I'm just going to leave it at that right now. Um, something else with strep pio, if you want to remember that it has hyaluronidase, it can cause impetigo. Actually, staph can cause impetigo as well. When I say staph, I meant staph aureus. And you're going to have streptolysins, okay? And you have streptokinase, which converts plasminogen to plasmin. That's going to lead to fibrinolysis, of course, for easy spreading by it. And it's going to have DNase, which is going to decrease viscosity of pus, causes easy spreading. And surprisingly, since it's a strep, okay, you're just going to take care of it with normal PNG. All right, just normal PNG. If you guys remember, PNG is going to be the IV form. Don't get it twisted. The V form is going to be by mouth, okay? And so something you can remember, I gave you mops for strep pneumo. All right, we can give you smashed here for um, for strep pio, okay? And so we can go with streptokinase here. All right, you can have streptolysins. You can have the M protein, all right? You're also going to have the anti-5A. 5A, if you remember, regulates chemotaxis of your neutrophils, okay? Um, let's say you can have, of course, it has exotoxins. You guys remember that because this is gram positive, right? I told you they had all kind of cool gadgets they spit out, right? And then hyaluronidase, that'll get you kind of started right there, you know, with, this, with the strep pio. Don't forget your rheumatic fever, strep throat, all of that, okay? So now let's go to the baby rock star, okay, group B strep. That is going to be, if you remember me talking about the camp test, okay, so that's going to be camp test positive. Oh, one more thing, sorry. Uh, if you have rust colored sputum, strep pneumo. Now, back to baby strep, okay, it's going to be camp test positive, not cyclic AMP, but camp, along with uh, listeria, it's camp test positive. Uh, you give normal PNG for it. I told you that PNG will take care of streps pretty much. You give the mother preventive shot like 34 to 36 weeks somewhere around there to protect against this so it doesn't cause the baby different complications and um, let me just go back to strep pneumo because I don't feel like I've given it the time of day that it really deserves on strep pneumo um, you're going to have a sudden acute onset of fever and chills with that pneumonia and something that is interesting to it if you see lancet shapes on an auger, okay? You know it's a it's a coxide, right? So you expect it to be like this, right? But strep pneumo, since they are the number one cause of pneumonia, and I'll just imagine a lancet coming in here at it, and I think I got this from Howard Shin's Micronemonics, it cuts it, and then they're gonna form two lungs like that, okay, on the auger plate. Alright, so it looks like two lungs, so they're lancet shaped after you get done with them, despite them technically being uh coxide shape, okay? Like I said, if you get anything from strep viridans is coming from uh, a dental procedure that you've had. It's dislodged and it's causing subacute endocarditis. Strep bovis, subacute endocarditis as well, right up here. Okay, and um, that's going to mostly uh, affect your colon. It's going to cause colon cancer. And let's see, I think that will pretty much take care of it. Of course, you're going to treat that with PNG as well or enterococcus fecals with PNG as well because they are all streps. Okay. That will complete it. And if you guys remember your $3 donation, if you're not getting it, I will certainly appreciate that. And I will talk to you next time. That completes our grand positive cot side for today.
Thank you.